Hello, this is Jeff Erdman, Media Inc. Shandon, and we're still working on the uh, jig to uh, cut out uh, uh, window lights and doors. Uh, we're making this for the for universal. Hello, this is Jeff, uh, EDS Inc. Shandon, and uh, we're still working on our uh, jig for the pin router. The, we're going to be we're still working on putting that together. We've done most of the machining on the uh, uh, linear components to it and uh, for the bearings. And now we're going to be assembling that. We've got a lot of other things going on in the shop. Some background noise. Uh, Ian's back here. This is uh, January 1st, 2020. And Ian and I are both here working. In fact, we've got a full crew in the office. They're getting things ready for their first of the year to get all that first of the year paperwork or the end of the year paperwork done for the first of the year. So uh, everybody's working diligently, uh, putting up some new features in the office and what have you. So at any rate, uh, there may be a few interruptions. So uh, let's take you down. I'll show you our, our parts and we'll go from there. Okay, we're looking down at our hole, and I've already talked about the different features uh, that we have. We have a, a base that was uh, uh, cut by a uh, 5 8 radius uh, uh, ball tip. Uh, we have a raceway there for our bearing housing, which are these. We got uh, all of these uh, cut up and ready to install and once we install these then we can install our bearings and uh, and then our set screws so we'll go ahead and get on with that so this is the first one here let me see if I can get a better shot of that so we've got this bar up on some blocks here uh, so that we have space underneath because once we drop the bearing into it then we're going to need that room. So the first thing that we need to do is put in our uh, raceway for our bearing. So there's barely enough room for it. Hang on for a second, I forgot to grab a hammer. Hold on. Okay, what we'll do is we'll use this tube to drive that raceway on down in there. That should be all the way down. Nope, it's not yet. Let's get it right over a, a block. There we go. Now it's all the way seated. Give it an extra cut. Okay, we're good. So now that we got that in there, we can go ahead and grab our bearing and pop that down in there. So now we'll drop the bearing down into the raceway. And you can see it's sticking out through the bottom uh, so that it has free freedom of movement here. And uh, now what we're going to do is we're going to pack the outside of this with some other smaller bearings. Let's see, is there any way I can get a better view for you? Not really, but uh, these are very small bearings, they're eighth inch bearings from McMaster Car, and uh, I have to use tweezers to, to install them because they're so small. Let me grab my tweezers. And they'll go all the way around the outside of that bearing up against that housing. And then we'll have a cap that will cap, cap it.
I tried using my fingers to do this and it was next to impossible. Okay, I'm not sure if I have enough room for one more or not. We'll see. Barely enough room for one more. See? Uh, they run around the perimeter of that 5 8 bearing. Now what we've got are some stainless steel caps that we're putting on. And these caps fit just inside that uh, three-quarter inch tube. These are actually freeze plugs that you would find in a block of a, a, a motor or something. Uh, so they're, they're a precision stainless steel cap. So what we're going to do, you can see, whoops, let's see if I can get that up to you. So you can see, you can see they're concaved. So this, the pointed side of the concave is going to go down towards the bearing and uh, it'll basically meet the top of that 5 8 bearing and then those smaller bearings will run around the outside of this within the race. So I'll pop that down in there and that fits just inside of that uh, that race at the very top. Now what we we've got the next step is to put our uh, larger cap in and again this is no more than a freeze plug but it's the uh, it's a uh, a uh, three quarters diameter so and we'll set it the same direction down into the the housing and what it'll do is push down against that other cap uh, and that'll and then we'll have an adjustment knot which we'll next install so this is a 7 8 uh, by 9 uh, set screw and it's hollow that way if I wanted to lubricate this thing I'll just drop a couple of drops in here let me go get my wrench for this. This takes a half inch wrench, so I have to grab out my big one. So this is a half half an inch uh, wrench. We'll take that, we'll tighten that down. Now, if I tighten that too tight, the wheel won't turn, the bearing won't turn at all. So I tighten it down to where it's tight. And then back off just a little bit until I feel that I've got free movement. So now that bearing is freely moving there. And I have a way of lubricating. Just put a couple, while I'm working with this, I could lubricate those a little bit. Just put a little bit of oil down in there. And it'll get past that cap and uh, lubricate those smaller bearings. This isn't going to have a whole lot of speed or anything to it. There shouldn't be a lot of wear. I put that stainless steel um, a bearing housing in there or sleeve so that it wouldn't wear because the aluminum itself would wear uh, if that bearing was in against it. And although this surface here is aluminum, there's not going to be any pressure on this surface. So I don't expect this to wear through uh, because all the force will be up against those top, uh, this top pin here. So we shouldn't have any issues with that. So now I just have to get all of these complete and uh, every component, uh, get all these sleeves in and all these bearings in. And I'm not going to bore you with that. Uh, we'll just go ahead and get it all done. And then I'll bring you back when we start assembling these into a four-sided unit. Okay, so uh, in our last video we showed, uh, uh, in fact the last couple of them, we've showed the making of this uh, jig. And so uh, we showed how we made the outer perimeter. We drilled these, we set ball bearings in them, and uh, so that we have uh, a roller at the bottom. There we go. A roller at the bottom. And uh, 
in our last video we showed the manufacturing of these brackets. So these were uh, the brackets that will uh, help us to establish the size of our vision kit. So you can see I have one here on this side and if you look over on the other side I have another one. Uh, and between here and there will be a quarter inch by three inch uh, bar that will uh, make a separation between these two. That one and that one. And then we have uh, two more down here because sometimes you have doors with uh, louvers and um, and vision kits. So you can set up your uh, uh, width for your louver and your width for your vision kit or heights rather. And uh, then this and that sets your uh, width of them. And uh, then the pin router will run between those quarter by three blades and the pattern that they set up on this jig. On the sides of the jig, right along the side, will be a measure. So we can adjust these to wherever we want to get the distance we want. And the little set screw will uh, tighten it on uh, so that uh, uh, we can use it uh, without this moving and changing the cutout on the pin router. So uh, we've just about got this complete. Then we have to go to working on the table. Um, I did make one mistake. I forgot that my hot top rail was uh, one and a quarter instead of one inch. So these were prepped for one inch. So I have to take out another quarter of an inch. And I've got the mill all set up for that. Another little project I have going right now is making some custom fasteners for a uh, uh, jail and uh, so we're working on that as well so we'll be doing both of those items uh, today so I might be taking you between the two we're gonna have both the lathe running and the mill run all at the same time so we're milling the part out taking a full quarter inch on that and we're at the same time, we're threading. This is quarter 28 uh, thread on that. And we're taking it slow.
large set on, out of aluminum, just, just fine. We're uh, three quarters per minute on our uh, set. Our speed is 800 RPM with a one inch cutter. And we're completely through that cut. Okay, so I've got my second run going here, uh, and uh, I'm taking it down to the size of the head of the fastener that I'm going to be using, and uh, that's for, uh, this is 916 stainless steel bar, bar stop, and I'm going to be taking it down to point, uh, 0.470, and so we've got a little ways to go, and uh, Stainless uh, just doesn't finish out too well sometimes if you uh, cut it too fast and everything. So I'm cutting her slow and uh, we'll just whittle at her. So I'll let this go and I'll take you up to my grinder. Uh, this has got a stop on it so it'll shut off as soon as uh, it gets to the stop. And uh, I'll take you up to the grinder and show you how I clean up the aluminum blocks I cut on the mill. So this is my grinding loft and as you can see I don't have it organized whatsoever yet. So the only machine that I have uh, running, this is my stock of aluminum and all my assorted grinders. The only one I have running right now is this one here. And so I've got a, a three inch wheel on this one and then I've got my buffing wheel. This is for aluminum and stainless. And you might have remembered that uh, to use this I had to make a, a flange. And this was the aluminum flange I made on a video some time ago. Uh, so that uh, we could use this buffing wheel. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this and clean up this sharp edge here. And uh, so it's a little bit more finished. And uh, then uh, we'll uh, go ahead and apply it to our our uh, cutout jig. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and clean up this edge. Turn on the machine. Makes a nice rounded edge on on these things. He burrs everything really nice. <laughs> so that kind of takes care of that. We're all ready. These are all ready to go onto the jig. We put our set screw into them and uh, we can go to work. We'll take you back down to the bottom of the lot. Okay, so we've got our brackets all routed out. And as you can see, they slide across there just nicely. So they'll line up with the ones at the other end of this uh, jig. And uh, that will allow us to adjust the uh, vertical direction of the unit. So, as I adjust, uh, you can see the one at that end. That one will be, uh, so we'll have a piece of one quarter inch by three inch aluminum. that will run from there down to this one here. Whoops, excuse me. There we go. To this one here that'll fasten into this groove here so uh, that'll sit below the the uh, aluminum that will be running horizontally so uh, and so they'll make squares within this jig the door will be set down on top of this jig and uh, and fr from 
we'll put it on the pin rod and we'll be able to cut out the uh, vision kits or louvers out of it. Let's walk over to the lathe and see how we're doing. It looks like we're still uh, about halfway from making our first cut across that. We'll let it continue to do its little work, slowly but surely. And to go back, I want to show you what we've done to our loft. So, this is the loft above the wood shop. And what we put is these uh, struts in here, all the way along. This is a 3 8 rod running from one side to the other. And you can see that it's bolted up to uh, these plates that are fastened to the uh, 2x12s. And so what that's going to do is give the loft more uh, weight capacity. It's sitting on 12-inch uh, 4x12 uh, uh, I-beams and uh, this, it comes out past here with the fascia. And we're going to need that to because we're putting up, let's see if we can get this We're putting up this, two of these. These are for the, uh, uh, that's a, a, a branch from a uh, uh, grapevine. I was gonna take some of that wood and see if I could make something out of it that would sell to the vineyards here. So uh, I've been letting that dry for the last year. Um, but at any rate, uh, this is for my plasma cutter. And uh, this is about, uh, eight foot by nine foot. So this is going up here. That, that is, sits uh, above uh, these bottom bends and that's, that's basically what guides the uh, torch. And uh, so the torch will have a span of about 16 foot by uh, uh, eight foot, I believe it is. So uh, you can put quite a big sheet of steel up there. We'll probably never cut anything that big, but uh, uh, that's its capacity. Um, we might use some sheet up there to make decorations for some uh, vineyard doors or something like that uh, that we may do. But we have the capacity to do whatever we want to do uh, with that plasma cutter. So we're anxious to get that up there and get, get it running too. So that's the reason for the struts that we put up in to the loft here. So, and of course, uh, I have shown before, but uh, uh, this is the pin router we're gonna use. We're gonna put a big old table on the top of that so that uh, we can put that jig on it and roll it around freely. And uh, that's the crane that will load and unload the doors off the, the, the pen router because our doors weigh about 100, 110 pounds. So that's pretty heavy for one person so we want to make it easier so we have a crane to do that. Uh, this machine here is a uh, Watkin whoops going wrong, wrong direction. Okay I'm having battery problems forgive me uh, but this is a cut off and trenching saw it has an 18 inch saw blade that goes on this saw and it can cut a 5 inch by 49 inch board, uh, quite a quite a uh, availability there. One inch will cut 52 inches cross cut and or trench. So uh, pretty uh, nifty machine. It does it hydraulically. You step down on that uh, bar there, and uh, the head automatically feeds. That's why this is sticking out so far behind it. Uh, it takes quite a footprint. Uh, this is, as I said, run all hydraulically. This is the hydraulic motor here uh, that, uh, uh, that, that uh, actually this is the electric motor that runs the hydraulic pump right there by chain and uh, uh, feeds the, um, the uh, uh, cylinder. So basically when you push down on your foot pedal, this bar gets pushed back which engages this button here that uh, uh, forces the head to feed forward, the saw the heat seat feed forward. So unlike a radial arm saw, uh, this saw uh, it, it self feeds. 
and you can set the feed rate at whatever you want to set it at, uh, some from five to twenty uh, feet per minute. So it's a pretty neat little uh, machine. Uh, this is a, a 1960s model. I think it's 1963 when Watkin produced it, and uh, it's a machine again that uh, isn't used too much anymore. Uh, you might find a machine like this at a big lumber company or something where they're cutting a lot of lumber and timber. But uh, most things are now CNC and automated, uh, so man doesn't even touch them. Okay, we've taken a, a couple of passes along this piece. Our target is uh, uh, 4, 40, 0.47. So let's just check her out and we'll see what we get here. Let's see if I can get that into view for you. Okay. I don't know if you can read that or not. Let's see. Am I going the wrong way? There you go. So what we got is uh, 475 plus... I have to stick my head in your way. Plus... Uh, 7 it looks like. Uh, so, 482 is what we got, and we're shooting for 470, so we're going to take one more pass, uh, we'll take off 12, and uh, we'll go from there. So I'm going to change the direction of my feed, uh, turn this puppy off, feed her in 12. and get her started. Okay, we finished our cut here. So we'll pull this out. Pull this this way. Nice finish on there for the most part. We can probably shine that up a little bit more, but it looks pretty good. And we're going to go ahead and we're going to take a look at the uh, dimensions we got there we should be right on so we're at 456 so I took too much off Let's see what it is out here in the center Ah, we're getting a little bit because of the sway of this thing. This is the reason I took it from the center before, and now we're right dead, dead on 470. So, uh, so I took my uh, dimension from the center before. I should have taken it from here because what's happening is the pressure of the cutter uh, is bending this out a little bit towards the center. But we can make it do. The 
we'll make it uh, work the way it is. This, what I'm making is not that precise. It's a fastener. This is the diameter of the head of the fastener, and that's not critical. Uh, so uh, we'll, we'll go with this and we'll be happy with it. Okay, we're back in the uh, welding shop. That's where we have our do-all bandsaw. And uh, I'll just kind of show you this machine here. This is our do-all. And uh, it has a uh, hydraulically power feed table. So, uh, so basically the table is going to move this direction as the band cuts. Now, I've got the wrong blade for the thickness of material I'm cutting. If I was cutting those singly, that would probably be the right blade. But uh, So I'm going to feed it real slow, put a lot of uh, WD-40 in it as we make our cut so that I don't uh, fill up that blade with uh, uh, aluminum. And uh, so we'll just go ahead and take the cut. But I, I'm only making this one cut and I don't feel like changing the blade. That's all there is to it. Being lazy, I guess. But we'll make it work. Okay, I've got my blade running at 140 uh, inches per minute. 140 feet per minute before it is. hydraulically as well. Cable feeds hydraulically. The cable can tilt. Here's the hydraulic piston uh, for the uh, feed. This is a blade cutter and welder. And here's all the controls we have. This is our current speed. A cut, a blade, and uh, this controls the speed of the table. You have all the dimensions, what you need to set things at as you go along. This tells you what materials, what speeds for what materials, speeds and speeds. So it's pretty. Uh, uh, well set up. Nice uh, saw for us. We got this at auction up in Washington. About, uh, it's been about two years ago now. And we're just about ready to come out of our cut. So this is the side that we're going to keep. There we go. Now I'm going to reverse the table, back it back out. I 
It's all controlled with this handle here. And that arrow's here, there's no feet at all. Okay, so now we're at the set at no feet. This is uh, the transmission uh, up here. No blade feed, so you can set your controls, uh, do all your band adjustments and everything without the uh, blade being on. Uh, and uh, so you have a band adjustment, table tilt, so this is, uh, so you can tilt it either to the left or to the right. Right now we've got it perfectly level. And this is done hydraulically too. Really sweet setup. Uh, this is your band tension, and this is your tension guide. So right here it tells you for uh, what your bandwidth is, what you want that set at. Real nice little setup. Anyway, that's the uh, setup there. Okay, so we made our angles. Uh, you saw me cut those on the uh, do-all bandsaw, and they're going to slightly go over these. So what we have to do is we have to uh, cut that angle so it goes around these uh, pins. So we've got that set up in our um, bridge port now. So we've got the angles clamped into the, the, the vise. We've got a clamp up here holding them together so they don't separate, so it acts as one piece, gives it more rigidity. And I've got a ball mill in the bridge port, which will cut through at the same angle as the bearing. So, and we've got it set at the height that it needs to be, and we'll go ahead and proceed to do that. Flip this and uh, get the other side. So this is what I was trying to accomplish, is uh, to get around these two bearings here so that uh, this would ride properly and that we have achieved, so we're good. 
Now I'll take these corners, I'll take them up, we'll clean them all up, and uh, I may, I'm going to have to test them to see if these bearings will clear. Uh, there's, the bearings are supposed to have uh, higher, a little bit higher than uh, eighth inch. They're supposed to have three sixteenths rise. So it may be that this bearing just needs to be adjusted higher is all. So, uh, uh, but the bearings are supposed to be above the, the plate. So uh, we'll play around with that if I have to. I'll come in and I'll cut this, this back an inch and an inch this way in width and maybe uh, uh, take off uh, uh, a sixteenth uh, of an inch or something like that to get, get the dimension that I need so that it'll work uh, for what I'm doing. So these, are gonna, these little gussets will go on every corner. That'll keep this squared up and uh, uh, then we'll make our cuts for our uh, quarter inch by three inch pieces. Hello there, this is Jeff Erdman, EDS Inc. Shandon, and uh, we've got a short clip for you today. We're going to uh, show you our uh, jig that we made for our pin router. And um, unfortunately, I don't have a whole lot more material to show you on its development and manufacture than what we have in here. So a large segment of what we did is not on video. But we can show you uh, the beginnings of it and the end of it. Uh, we can show you how we put it together and what the reason was for it. Uh, we don't have the pen router up and running yet, or I'd show a demo. But as soon as I get that up and going, we'll probably have it in another clip. I want to show you another uh, piece of equipment that we just got. It's right here behind me. This is our new time saver. This is a three belt sander. And uh, uh, we just purchased this. We have to get power into it and uh, uh, air into it and all sorts of stuff yet. So it's a ways off before we can use it. But uh, if you, uh, well, we got everything piled against the thing. Hang on for a second and I'll move some things and we'll show you. So this is the inside of the unit. It has uh, three sanding heads on it. Uh, the width of this can uh, take up to 54 inches. So it'll take any door that we have pretty much. Uh, we rarely ever build doors that are wider than four foot. Uh, so this will have the capacity of sanding uh, the, the widest door that we possibly make here uh, out of wood. And uh, with the three heads, it's able to go from coarse down to fine. So when it comes out the other end, there's hardly any hand work to be done. Now, What's really interesting is this machine used to be the machine that we used, or we'd send our doors down to a company across the street, and they would use this very machine to sand our doors. And of course, I've told you the story already. They uh, decided to buy a new machine and put this up for sale. They asked me to buy it. We declined. Later on, it came up in auction. We got it pretty cheap. So uh, anyway, so that's... Uh, one of our new machines. Okay, so this is the jig that uh, uh, we built to use with the pin router. And it's designed to have a door lay down on top of that. And uh, uh, you can see these sections here. These are the horizontal sections, these two here. And they can be moved inward or outward to allow for uh, different size openings that we need to cut into the door. So if you can imagine, this square here could be used uh, as, say, a louver cutout. So the door would be clamped in. We've got the clamps over here and over there. The door set in. It's clamped up against the, uh, this side. And these are fully adjustable for various door widths. And uh, uh, so the door's clamped in here. We set, this is on the pin router. Uh, the pin is coming up uh, through the bottom and it will ride against these edges to make this 
cutout. The pin, the pin router, the router actually comes down from the top and the pin sticks up from the bottom to guide uh, that uh, router head. And so it'll cut exactly the same dimension as on here as long as the pin is the same dimension as the router. Now what we've done to uh, make this a, an uh, adjustable unit, you can see down in the corner we have a uh, measure all the way along the sides and the heads. So we can loosen these and adjust them to any dimension that we want. So uh, that uh, makes it a very universal unit. We can change sizes relatively quick without having to spend the time of measuring and drawing and then cutting out like we used to. So it's going to be a very efficient jig uh, for uh, doing door cutouts. Now there's a lot of CNC stuff out there, but I don't have the $50,000 to buy it. So uh, we're doing it old school and uh, using this uh, uh, jig to make it happen. Uh, this is beneath each one of these uh, screw heads is a bearing. And those bearings, as you can see here, are what will guide across a, a deck on the pin router that uh, will allow it to move freely so that we can uh, 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 roll it around to make the cuts. So anyway, so that's what we were working on. So this is our uh, pin router here. We're going to make a removable tabletop that's about uh, uh, six feet out this way and it'll go both directions eight feet. Uh, so obviously it has to be one that you'll put up and pull down otherwise uh, uh, it'll take up way too much space in this little shop that we have here. So uh, we're going to make that and it'll just hang on the wall here and uh, as we need to use the machine we'll take it down set it on top and it'll have a hole here in the center to, uh, uh, for the pin to pop up. So the pin pops up from the bottom like this and that jig will ride around on that uh, against that pin. And from the top down is the router. You can take a look in here. Here's the spindle. And uh, so, so that can spin up to, I forget how, what the speed rate is. Uh, I think it's like 25,000 RPM uh, that this will run at. And uh, I'll have to read the manual again. But routers run at extreme speeds uh, to cut wood. So that will do the cutout on the doors for us. And uh, so that's why we made that uh, big old jig you saw over there. So anyway, that's uh, what this week's video is about. It's a, a compilation of uh, probably um, two months worth of work. Um, we've been doing this off and on, but we finally finished it. We want to show you the completed project. So we want to thank you for joining EDS Inc. Shandon. Uh, we appreciate your... Uh, viewership and uh, if you enjoyed this video then you can give us a thumbs up if you didn't like it you can give us a thumbs down and uh, if you'd like subscribe to EDSC Shannon we always enjoy, enjoy having new subscribers so thanks again and come and visit us again